thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I'm going to make a video about the books that I have planned to read in March. Um, I don't do TBRs as a general rule and especially so far this year I've been very good at reading by whim. It's going really well and I've read I think without exception for my TBR so far this year which is like really really good because um, we all say we want to do it and generally speaking we fall off the wagon straight away <laughs> and um, so that's positive and um, most of my plans for March are still from my TBR but um, I just ended up making a list of what I need to read for March and then that kind of formed a TBR. So. The first thing that I want to do in March is to read some, at least one Irish book for the Irish Readathon, um, which I will link the details of down below. Um, and so I picked up all of my books by Irish authors. I think I've got them all, but there may be some that are by authors who I didn't realise are Irish. So I've got a little stack of those here. So I will show you my pile of possibilities. The first one is this book. Um, Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan, which is very well known, um, the tiny little book, so even if I'm running out of time, it will be possible to read something this small, this little novella, um, and one of my colleagues at work kindly lent this to me, so it would be nice to be able to give it back as well, and I know this is um, set in Ireland, it's about a guy around Christmas time, I think he works as someone who delivers coal, and he discovers like a scandal in Irish history, which... Um, that that's what this book is about. The next book is non-fiction and I've had this for ages and ages. This is a really well-known book which was written back in 1996 and this is Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt, A Memoir of a Childhood and it says the little blurb on the back. Well actually this won the Pulitzer Prize in 1997, wow. Um, when I look back on my childhood, I wonder how I managed to survive at all. It was, of course, a miserable childhood. The happy childhood is hardly worth your while. Worse than the ordinary miserable childhood is the Irish miserable childhood. And yet worse is the miserable Irish Catholic childhood. So it sounds intriguing. I know there's a film or a TV adaptation of this as well, which I haven't seen. Um, so this would be like a kind of a hard read, but that's that one. One that I saw on... Booktube, when I just started watching Booktube, I think, um, is a book that I saw Lauren from Lauren of the Books talk about. I bought it in hardback and I still haven't read it. And that is Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. So this is a book, I think, about um, an abusive relationship. So uh, the, the, the blurbs inside, I don't know if I can show you. I'll have to hold it like this, I think. When Sarah falls for Matthew, she falls hard. So it doesn't matter that he is 20 years older, that he sees her only in secret, that slowly but surely she's sacrificing everything else in her life to be with him. Sarah's friends are worried. Her father can't understand how she could allow herself to be treated like this. And she's on the verge of, verge of losing her job. But she can't help it. She's addicted to being desired by Matthew. And love is supposed to hurt, isn't it? I don't know if I'll find that too hard to read. Um, it's quite tricky sometimes reading about abusive relationships and um yeah we'll see we'll see about this but um I know Lauren really liked it at the time the next book I've had on my TBR for about eight years um <laughs> this is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry I know this one got a lot of positive press around the time of release so I got it I think it was in one of the Waterstones buy one get one half price sales and um, I still haven't read it. So I know it's about it's about two soldiers, I believe, in the US, um, Thomas McNulty and Joe Cole. They're in the 1850s. They're like 17 years old and they are fighting in the Indian Wars and the Civil War. And um, I think it's like a queer love story between the two soldiers set in this kind of period of really difficult you know, difficult things, witnessing a lot of horrors and stuff like that. I thought it was in um, World War One, but it's not. It's um, 1850. So there's that one. 
The next one is one by an author that I've read already, but this is their debut, and this is by Graham Norton. So for anybody who lives abroad, Graham Norton made his career as a TV talk show host in the UK. He's Irish, he's a really um, funny guy, and he still does his own talk show, um, but he's now also um, on the radio, and he's also written books. And I read his one of his other books, the name of which escapes me momentarily, um, but I really enjoyed that. So I got this one, which is his first book. This is set in a remote village in Ireland where a long time ago there was a boy called Tommy who was involved with the big house in the village and there's a lot of secrets surrounding that. And then in the future... Um, a body is discovered in the grounds of this old farmhouse which is thought to be Tommy and a load of sort of secrets from the past start coming up and being unravelled by the local police department so that sounds interesting and then to finish off a novel which is by John Boyne who I've also read before which is The Absolutist this one looks quite chunky but the writing is huge the writing's massive in this book and there's also you can't really tell from on the camera the writing's really big and um i think it will be really quick to read but this is set in world war one I. I really like books set in world war one two or the interwar years and this is about a guy who's taking a train from London to Norwich which is another thing which appeals because that's where I live um, and um, he's taking a train to deliver some letters to a woman about from a um, a guy he fought alongside in World War One and the guy who wrote the letters put his guns down on the battlefield and declared himself a conscientious objector which is like um, said it's brought shame on the whole family so it's like the story I think of that family and also probably the person who's bringing the letters and his relationship with him as well and then finally a non-fiction work again um, which is Don't Touch My Hair by Emma Dabry I read What White People Can Do Next by her last year and it was one of my favourite books of the year and this is a history of black hair and um, so there is artwork and photos in this book as well. Um, hold on. Yes, you can see there's like different things like that in this book. But I think Emma Dabry's writing is excellent and I really enjoy her posts on like social media and stuff like that as well. And um, I think she's great. So this would be a really cool to really cool time to pick up Don't Touch My Hair. So that's all the Irish books that I own in physical form. I have two on Kindle as well. One is Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, which was shortlisted for the Women's Prize last year. I really wanted to read it then and I didn't for some reason, but um, I still really want to read that. It's set in the Troubles in Northern Ireland and it's about a woman who, I think she's quite young, a young teacher who also, her family have a pub and she falls for a barrister who's been defending people in the IRA who's also Protestant and gets into a quite a dangerous relationship with him. So that's one of them. And the other one is The Hand That First Held Mine by Maggie O'Farrell, which is a dual timeline novel about, I think, somebody who's suffering from postpartum de depression or psychosis in the present day and about two women who were about... I don't know, like up to 100 years ago in London and how their lives link with each other. It sounds a little bit like The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox, which I didn't really like that much. Uh, I think it's one of Maggie Fowell's first books and I definitely think I prefer her newer works. But anyway, so that's the possibilities for the Irish Readathon. So by no means am I saying I'm reading all of those books. I'm just going to be choosing at least one from that pile. Other commitments, so we have our work book club and it was actually my choice which was chosen this month and I chose this book which I've had on my TBR for a while which is Crossing to Safety by Wallace Stegner. I think it's quite nice to read books that are not just new release books but older backlist books as well and this has got such a gorgeous cover that it's really beautiful. It's a Penguin Modern Classics edition. 
So this says, um, when two young couples meet for the first time during the Great Depression, they quickly find they have much in common. Charity Lang and Sally Morgan are both pregnant, while their husbands, Sid and Larry, both have jobs in the English department at the University of Wisconsin. Immediately, a lifelong friendship is born, which becomes increasingly complex as they share decades of love, loyalty, vulnerability and conflict. Written from the perspective of the ageing Larry Morgan, Crossing to Safety is a beautiful and deeply moving exploration of the struggle of four people to come to terms with the trials and tragedies of everyday life. I think that sounds great for a book club because it sounds like we're going to really get to know the, the characters well and um, have a lot to discuss. And I really love sort of character studies which take place over a long time. I love things that are set at universities um, as well. And it's not that long a book, so it's perfect sort of book club length really. I think it's about... Yes, about 327 pages, so that's an ideal length as well. So that one's a definite read. And then I also, so far, have been keeping up with Ben from um, Ben Reads a Good Challenge. Um, he's doing a, a prompt a month on um, Storygraph, which I'll also link in the description box. And so there's a prompt for each month. So for January, it was to read some a book with the the name Anne as the author which I did and then there was this February was to read a dy dystopian book which I did and so March is to read a book which has been adapted into I think it was an Oscar winning film and Ben linked a Wikipedia page which lists all of the options for this and I had one of them on my TBR which I've wanted to get to for ages and this is The Descendants by Carrie Hart Hemmings. I saw Heather from um, Too Many Heathers talk about this book ages ago. And she really liked it from what I can remember. I really enjoyed the film, which I watched at the cinema whenever it came out. And then when I saw this in a charity shop quite a long time ago now, I bought it. Um, so I think it's about sort of outsiders owning land in Hawaii. And about... Um, the guy who owns the land, his wife falls really ill and he's there with his daughters. That's all I can remember. And the film came out in 2012. Wow, so I saw this film 12 years ago, so I can't remember too much about it. I don't think George Clooney's generally in a bad film. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. There will be a book from my TBR spin pile, but I haven't... Um, we don't know what the prompt will be for TBR Spin, so either Sarah or Jill will do a video in the next few days, I should imagine, which will give us the spin prompt for there, so which I can choose from my stack of now 10 remaining books. I have a couple of books to carry on with. So I am buddy reading currently Ancestors by Professor Alice Roberts with Joe, and this is a history of ancient Britain in seven burials and this is really good we are about halfway through this book at the moment it's my fault that this is going into march because um i had to put it on pause while i read my book club book for this month so we put it on pause for about just over a week and now we've picked it up again so this one will probably tick over now into march we're going to finish that one i've also got another one which i'm going to be taking over into march which is one that I really wanted to read anyway, but also part of a project. And this is The Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yavos. So this book has had so much hype. And also on a book group that I'm on on Facebook for doctors, um, everyone has been saying how they're staying up like late into the night to read this book. And I am only a tiny way in, so I'm about 80 pages in, I think. And this book, it's been a bit unfair on this book because I keep having to put it down to pick up other things and I really just want to kind of sit and do it all in one go. Um, but I'm also reading this as part of a project. So an upcoming video that I will have in the next few weeks is I'm going to be reading and vlogging my five highest rated books and my five separately I'm going to read my five lowest rated books according to Goodreads and this is in my top five of the highest rated books so this is one that I wanted to read but I'm also going to be able to use it as um, discussion for that video and then the final thing I will start a new audiobook so I'm literally minutes away from finishing my current audiobook which is The Five by Hanny Rubenhold which I have adored and I will talk about in my wrap-up. 
But what I'm planning to do, one of my goals for this year was to um, use my Audible credits for any new release books that I want to get because I don't read a ton of new release books and um, because obviously new release hardbacks are about 20 quid, it makes more sense to do them from Audible. So what I was planning on doing is using my backlog of credits to, to start reading the Women's Prize books and I'm only going to do one credit at a time because I want to save some for the fiction long list, which will be coming out really soon. And so I need to choose one of the books from the Women's Prize for Nonfiction long list. I've listened to the audio samples of most of them, because not all of them have audio samples yet. And I've narrowed it down to about five. So I need to just pick which one that I'm going to start off with, which is exciting. So even though it sounds like I've got the craziest TBR in the world, I don't think I have. So I've got to finish two books... Pick an Irish reader thumb book, read my book club book, read the book for Ben's um readathon, and then read um the TBR spin books. It's only six. So that sounds doable, doesn't it? <laughs> um so if you've read any of those books, let me know because I'd really like to hear what your thoughts are. If you're planning on doing the Irish readathon or if you have made a TBR, then please do tell me about that video as well. Let me know what you're reading at the moment or any favourite books that you've picked up recently and I hope you have a really lovely week and I will speak to you soon. Bye!